to Loudmouth News. Coming at you from Seattle. Let's talk about it. Okay, now I'm, I, I haven't even read this yet, but I am so excited. Are we on the uh, <laughs> platform of ridiculous or you got something that's perhaps interesting? It's the world's first hemp airplane. Getting high on the airplane. I like that better because of the semantic possibilities. I don't think I'm buying a ticket to that, okay? Oh, no, I'm not going to take that flight, okay? Hold on, though. No, similar to carbon fiber, hemp's durable, lightweight. Most importantly, it's sustainable. Okay, um, let's try another airline. It just doesn't... Is no, it a model? Or is it? Uh, no, they're making airplane. Carbon polymers are drawn on very thin strands or twisted into yarn, you know, kind of like carbon fiber, woven together in a cloth-like material, and then the hemp fiber reinforces it and hey it can replace all fiberglass they're saying so we're gonna have so, like yeah, per- a hemp corvette this stunning sports car is made from around a hundred pounds of hemp wow a hemp cor yeah wow really so it's economically feasible and um well that's it's the, a better than uh, carbon fiber that's the dream of derek kesick the ceo and founder of <sighs> hemp Arth group limited there you go tell him to wake up okay and tell him it was only a dream okay no. <laughs> it's not gonna happen <laughs> his approach has him creating some of the first hemp products to ever exist in the category. I mean, they're making bulletproof vests. Oh, so, you know, my, my next thought is uh, the, the plane probably flies really slow. <laughs> <laughs> From here to L.A. will take nine hours. Well, it's hemp. It doesn't contain THC, so you're right. not going to be so, up there yeah. going, hey, man. That was, mo- that was just my attempt of trying to be funny, but that's uh, that's amazing. Here's the accurate statement they make. Okay, he here says, we go. He says straight up, 75% of the plane will eventually disappear into the ground because hemp is biodegradable. Yeah, that, uh, I'm not flying that uh, airline, okay? If it, if it ever flies. $23 million worth of airplane has answered a lot of committee questions. It can fly. But, I mean, I don't see why it wouldn't, given what I know about aviation. I, I mean, it's still, you can make an airplane out of paper. sticks and paper. Right, right, right. Exactly. like we used to do when we were kids, you know, go upstairs and watch it fly down into the family room. Yeah. I well, the Wright days. brothers did it out of sticks and paper, and it flew. Yeah, it did. So, Dangerous, but yeah. Yeah. It flew for a few seconds. Yeah. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about medicinal. medicinal. So take a look at this, this right here, because you can now go to Hello MD and get your cannabis recommendation online. You're kidding. No, the, the purpose is you're to just like, making this up, right? I'm there's not, a there's a marijuana app now, huh? Well, get your medical cannabis recommendation online. Hello, MD. From a professional, not Joe down the street. What's up, guys? Joey here, and I'm going to show you how to get free drugs. They operate legally in California. That's amazing. They're, they're they're consultants. It's a solution that helps retailers acquire new patients and renew existing ones. There's almost 40 million people in the state of California, so wow. So you know, a lot of times people didn't go to the medical places because you had to go get talk to a doctor, say, well, I'm depressed or I'm happy or whatever. But patients connect to a doctor from the comfort of their home or office using just a smartphone, tablet, or laptop. And your friendly neighborhood dealer was only a hashtag away. The platform manages the initial data input from prospective patients, after which the patient is put in virtual queue to meet with one of the HelloMDs on staff doctors versus a video video chat. So you actually do talk with the doctor. It's not just a computer program. So you go to the app and you're talking to a professional and you say, look, I got this incredible pain in my knees and I was recommended and I have the app and can you help me? Help me help you. Yeah, I mean they make wow. a, they make a digital recommendation, and it's like it's like a face chat, I guess. So when you go to the dispensary, you instead of buying this train, buy this train. It should help with your knees. Uh, I think they're more <laughs> going to tell you whether you want a sativa or what kind of a blend you want. Then you know, buy the barista's you know, coffee, we should, the barista's we should hire, coffee CBD. We should hire them and have them have their own segment here on Loudmouth News. Now let's talk to the doctor. We will put the leeches here, here, and here for all your aches and pains. <laughs> The story you are about to hear is true. This is the absurd and ridiculous. Oh boy, you found something. What's happening? There's a Vermont ruling that says that the scent of burnt marijuana is not probable cause for search and seizure. So the so the cops there is like you roll down the window and he suddenly is like, dude, I smell weed. They call that probable cause. It's not probable cause. For Your attorney, search. I disagree. That's probable cause. Is I rolled down the window and it smelled like marijuana. It's the you are out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. You're out of order. Not according to a Vermont Supreme Court ruling. Wow. That they say it's a step towards eliminating racial disparities. Hold on. 
So by not letting the scent of marijuana be probable cause, <laughs> you for lost me right there. Racial disparities, huh? So you just uh, so what does that mean? The police just pulling over people of color? It, it means that when you when <laughs> well, you walk what? up to a person of color or whatever racial disparity, I, I assume that's what they are getting at. And they that, smell like weed, and there you go. There's probable cause. Probable Throw them on the ground, shoot them in the back nine times, and then you tell everybody I was in fear for my life and move on. You all saw him. He had a gun. That is Vermont. Wow. That's the Vermont Supreme yeah, Court. Those, those it people. is a Vermont Supreme Court ruling. Wow, what's up with Northern America? See, I'm confused. So the whole thing started because it was centered around Gregory Zulo, who happened to be an African-American man from uh, Rutland, Vermont, who was pulled over to traffic stop. And then the state trooper says uh, that his registration sticker was partially covered with snow. So he pulls him over. And then he smells faint odor of burnt marijuana. So he asked him to exit the vehicle. So hold on, you pull up and you smell alcohol. You can certainly go, hey, get out of the vehicle, Merit, sir. I smell bacon. Does anyone else smell bacon? Right. And the most important part of that story is that he lived. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, um, did you mean the cop or did you mean, the, did you mean Gregory? Gregory. Oh. I mean, first of all, what is Gregory doing in Vermont? <laughs> <laughs> 21 at the time. He was 21 at the time. Okay, so yeah, he's probably a college student. So I, I don't know why it necessarily has anything to do with the racial aspect of it, because I suppose you pull a white person over. and Right, it that's like the weed. confusing part about the, the racial profiling kind of case. But I think the whole thing's stupid. It, just, it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, though, because you pull up into a car and you smell alcohol, you certainly ask the driver if you've been drinking and you can't get out. Probable you, cause. Yeah, you, you get up, you smell marijuana coming out of the car. I would think that would be... The same thing. Why it would be Probable different? Cause. I don't know. I think we're singing a song here. We don't even know it. Ultimately, though, I guess what happened was the police officer reportedly smelled a faint odor of burnt marijuana and asked him to exit the vehicle. And ultimately, they seized the car. I'm sure they found wow, marijuana they on it. Found the, the man's person. car. That's going to cost four hundred dollars. Then he's got to go to, he's got to, you know, take a day off work and have a court case. Yeah, that's complicated and costly. It's, it's product, product time, time, it's product time on Loud Mouth News. It's product time, it's product time on loudmouthnews.com. So this is important, actually. And I, I would think that anybody serious about what they're putting in their body, especially if you're doing any home stuff. Of course, stuff, absolutely. This is a marijuana THC potency test kit. I mean, imagine. For that big job on Wall Street or the local grocery store, right? I have fast food experience. <laughs> yeah, like 20 years ago. Well, no, no, it allows you to take whatever you have, like your weed, et cetera, and test it at home. So you know what it is it's if you grow it at home, et cetera, or if you buy it off the shelf and... I know you're going to get around to explaining the purpose of this test, right? I mean, why? But people who get high off of cannabis, you know, they pass the smell test and the uh, the feel test. Why right. do they need to look at their test? They already know how they feel. It's just knowledge. The knowledge is the most valuable commodity in the world. Knowledge is power. It is. So it elaborate. Is. You got the story. So let me hear. Wow. It, it, Look you at know, that. 250 bucks. You get a kit. You can test your own weed at home. Yeah, marijuana. $250. Tea, well, 80 bucks if you just want the little like one time deal. So what is the business evaluation? It's like a $7 billion company. No. <laughs> so how do you test yourself again? I mean, what do you do? You you spit in it. What do you do? You spit in it and it changes colors and you have this chart. And if it goes. Oh, ooh. no, no. It, does, it doesn't test like how high you are. I have to test you, Charlie. And you pay. Pass the test. You won! It tests the THC potency of the weed. So you break a piece of weed off as a sample mm -hmm. or whatever it is, oil, etc. And you mm. put it into the test kit and you know that, okay, this is 60 milligrams per whatever or, you know, it is that you want. And it's X amount sativa and X amount. So that's when they're busting somebody on one of those detective TV shows and they take a little bit of that heroin or cocaine and they put it in a little container and they shake it around and if it turns a certain color, you're going down. Dun, dun, dun. Handcuff him. Case closed. Case, Case closed. closed. So you keep this $250 kit around so you can test yourself. So what's next on products? Can we got something I can take or rub on me or something? Uh, uh, rub on you, yes. We have the hemp lotion blessed with love. Ooh! 
Forbidden Leaf. That sounds like a movie, right? That's it's a, a good name. Quentin Tarantino, right? Forbidden Leaf, right? It's a, it's a good name. Starring Bruce Willis. Who wrote this thing, by the way? <laughs> <laughs> well, no, but they, they only use the best quality moisturizing ingredients that nature has to offer. And uh, it's basically cold-pressed hemp seed oil, aloe vera, shea butter, vitamin E. Same stuff you'd get you know, with the inclusion of, of CBD in the moisturizer. A myriad of products that have you covered. I mean, you, wow, look at that. Yes. I like the Buddha thing there going there. That's, that's kind of cool. Forbidden leaf. So where's Tony? I, I don't know where Tony is. What do you mean you don't know where Tony is? I hope he's not with her. What do you have next? Taking the icky out of sticky. Wow, I don't think Snoop would be happy with taking the icky out of oh. sticky. <laughs> no. <laughs> Ooh, we no goo. Oh, goo non stick products. They've revolutionized the way in which cannabis concentrates are carried and stored. Okay, what is that? Is that an acronym for something? People are losing up to 5% of their product on average when they would throw away the disposable plastic concentrate container. Oil is a gooey, sticky liquid that can be kind of hard to handle. You oh, throw it away. Yeah, and you just throw it away. There was some still, still some peanut butter in there, and you just threw it away, right? Yeah. Because you're, you couldn't get it on your knife. Basically, what it does is uh, takes the icky out of sticky. No Goo is a series of non-stick silicone products to be used by the rapidly expanding cannabis concentrates market. Plain and simple. You walk into the, is Sticky here? No, no, we had to let Sticky go. He's, uh, he didn't work out. And so we've taken the Sticky out of Icky. This has been a Loudmouth News Break. If you want to hear everything going on in the cannabis industry, then turn into loudmouthnews.com. Let's talk about it. This episode of Loudmouth News has been brought to you by Canna Broadcast Media. Mainstream media access for the cannabis industry. CannaBroadcastMedia.com.